right into it. Right here, we have the Dunder Mifflin sales report. And over here, we have all the products that they were selling along with the months that they were sold in. And so in January, they sold 450 reams of paper. Down here, we have the total items per month. And so in January, they sold 898 units of uh, products or, or things that they sold. And at the very end, we have the year end total. So this is the total amount of paper that they sold throughout the year. Now we're gonna use this data right here for all of our charts. Now, you may not have data exactly like this. It can come in lots of different flavors, but you're gonna get the basic gist of how to use charts, how to edit it, how to customize it to fit what you need. And then we're gonna kind of put it right over here and kind of create its own sheet where we can kind of visualize all the things that we want to show. So let's jump right back over here into sales. And first thing we need to do is kind of highlight the data that we're gonna be working with. Now I'm gonna start with everything, but um, you know I'll show you along the way. We don't actually want everything, but we can filter that stuff out as we go. So let's go right here and we're gonna insert and we're gonna go over to charts. Now this is the chart section. There's lots of different types of charts, um, but the first thing that we're gonna be looking at is right here. This is a 2D column or kind of like a bar chart. And we're just gonna click right here and we're gonna pull this down. So now that we have this down here, there are a few things that I wanna show you before we actually really get into it. And I kinda of wanna show you the options that you have. So if you go up here, we have different uh, chart styles. And so if I hover over them, you can see that each one kind of looks a little bit different. And it really doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't really change the data in any way, just how you visualize it. And so if that is important, if that is something that you, um, you wanna stick with a certain theme or a certain look, then go for that. Uh, the other thing that's really nice to have over here is this switch row and column. So right down here, you can see this purple and you can see this red. Those are our rows and columns and we can switch that right here. So if we go like this, now instead of the months being right here, the months are the colors and the actual product is right here. Let's click it again and it'll go back. And so now we have this kind of time series. Now we have January through the end of your total. Now, this one is one that I think is super helpful. You know, it, you can do it down here as well if you go to this filter. Um, but both of these are super helpful because you sometimes just wanna select all the data and then kind of get in there and mess with it. Something that we wanna get rid of is this total items per month. So we wanna remove that. And then we also want to remove this year end total because both of those are, are kind of the end result. They're not the actual data per month or, or per product. So we're gonna get rid of those and we're going to apply that. And as you can see, just right off the bat, our data has changed dramatically. Uh, and that's because we aren't including these, these large, large numbers that were kind of throwing off uh, the visualization for us. So this one right here, as is, is already pretty good. Um, what we can do right here is we can change this and we're just gonna say products sold per month. Now, what we can do if we want to move it to another um, to another sheet is we can actually move the chart and we can select where we want to move it. We can move it to chart sheet and we can do that. Or something that I do um, almost 99% of the time is I just copy and I come over here and I'm going to paste it. And so now we have this, um, this chart right over here as well as back here. And so I typically tend to do that because now we can still go over here and change this one as much as we want. So if we wanna go in here, we can alter this one and it won't affect the other one. So we just have basically two copies. So we're gonna keep this one right here. This is gonna be our first visualization. Um, and as I said, it's, it's fairly straightforward. If you've ever done any types of charts or graphs before, um, right here, it's January, February, March, April, May. And if you hover over these, you can see that that's the, the paper. And if we just glance, you know, the paper is their biggest product by far. And so that blue, um, which is their paper, is going to be the biggest every single month. So that makes perfect sense. Now, what if we want to change up uh, the, the kind? So what if we want to change up the kind of visualization that it offers us? Well, we have a lot of different options. Let's go right over here to change chart type. Now, this is going to offer you just about 
everything you could possibly imagine or want and even things that you absolutely would never ever want ever. Um, and so I'm going to show you some of the good ones and I'm going to show you some just absolutely insane ones that uh, Excel came up with, which cannot, I, I could not imagine a scenario with, that these are ever used. Um, but within these columns, you can do, they're called cluster columns, uh, these stacked columns. So it would look just like this. Those are often used as well. Um, and then we have ones that I, they're just not used often. Let's, let's take a look at this one right here. I mean, it's tough. It's tough to look at, um, but let's let's put it right here. This is basically the same thing that we just had, except visualized in a different, um, we'll call it more unique way. Uh, and let, let's, for the sake of it, let's put it over here. Um, these two things show the same information. They show the same data, just one is shown well and one is not shown well. Um, I'm not a fan of these 3D type of visualizations. I, uh, I just don't like them, but maybe you do and, and you want to use that. That's fantastic. Let's go back. Um, something else that you probably use a lot are things like these, um, these line graphs. Okay. So these are line graphs and they're different types. So there are these stacked, um, hundred percent stacked line lines with markers, different flavors for this, this type of line graph. And so you can go in here and take a look Again, um, not my favorite, but they have it as an option if you choo so choose to do this. Um, but I kind of I'm kind of a simple guy, um, but I'm going to go in here and it's pretty clustered. Um, I want to kind of take the ones that have the highest sales uh, or the highest total amount sold. So that would be paper, manila folders and three ring binders. So let's go in here. We want to keep paper. We want to keep uh, manila folders and we want to keep three ring binders and let's apply that. And so now it's a lot cleaner and we're just going to copy this and we're going to put it over here. And I'm just putting these all over here for you uh, because we'll look at this at the end and just kind of see different options and, and ways to do things as we have gone through this tutorial. So let's go back here. Now, something else that we haven't looked at is the actual colors and color schemes that you can do. So let's go right here to these chart styles and we can go to color. Now, color is um, something that probably is quite overlooked um, in actual charts and graphs. Some terrible colors like this or, or this um, where they're really close together, especially when you have a lot of them. Um, for example, let's just pretend we put all of them back really quickly. It is near impossible to distinguish these colors. Um, we wouldn't, we wouldn't want that. Let's go back to this color. You know, when you have it like, uh, in some of these colors, at least it at least distinguishes them. So you can kind of see what you're working with. Uh, but when you have it in these monochromatic options, sometimes they're just impossible to distinguish. So be sure to choose the right colors that you're using so that if somebody who's never seen this data before looks at it, they can easily distinguish uh, the product and the month that you are looking at. But let's go just back up here. We'll choose this default option. Um, well, let's choose this one right here. This one's nice, although there's lots of yellows and oranges. Uh, let's see this one. This one's not bad. Greens, blues, uh, and like yellows. So that's nice. Um, other things that we want to look at and there are these chart elements right here. Other things that we can add are things like data labels. Um, and right here, it's super messy. Um, but if we went back and we got rid of some of these things like the printer, staples, highlighters, pens, and total, if we apply that, it's a little bit easier to distinguish. Um, and that's you know something that you may be interested in doing. You can also add this data table at the bottom, which is the actual columns and rows that you have for this visualization right here. Now let's expand this quite a bit. I'm going to make this extremely large. If you have something like this, it actually can be pretty nice. Um, you know, maybe we get rid of these data labels, but it can be easy because you're putting it all in one place. You can also make this two separate visualizations. So you can have one visualization just like this and right underneath it, you can have the actual rows and columns, but this option allows you to put it all in one. 
So let's put this back down because that is way too big. And uh, wait, let's expand it a little bit. Now, if you notice right here, we have our legend up top. Um, it is possible to actually change that. You can go right here and you can move this um, kind of wherever you want. Um, but it's not exactly easy to put based off how we have it right here. If we go in to this chart elements, we go down to legend and we hit this little arrow right here. We can select it on the right, the top, the left and the bottom, or we can just go to more options, uh, which allows us to push it anywhere. But um, let's say I want to do it just like this. I'm going to put it on the right and I actually want to bring it down right here. And, you know, that's just an option if you want to kind of customize it a little further, makes it a little cleaner. Uh, you can do that with almost any of these things. So if you click on this, oops, if you click on this, you can move this anywhere as well. So if you want to move this over here on top of it, you can and make it look terrible or you can move it uh, right back over here. You know, this is something that you can move around. Uh, you just kind of want to make sure you're doing it the right way. So let's get this back where it was. There we go. Now, before we go any further, let's copy that and put it right over here with our other uh, charts and graphs. And if you see over here on this side, we have this format chart area. Notice I haven't showed you this at all yet. That is because I genuinely just don't use this almost at all. Um, there are some good stuff in here. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, if you are someone who really wants to go in there and super customize it, you can do that. Um, but I honestly, I just never get in here. and I never, you know, change the glow or the shadows. Um, just not something I use. And, and some of these are only for these three, 3D formatting, which I never use. And so I'm not going to show you and walk through these things. Again, I, I really don't use it. And so if you want to go in there and mess with it, uh, you know, by all means, go for it. It's just not something that I want to take the time to show you. And with that being said, let's go back over to this chart sheet that we have. And it was super, super easy to get these um, charts and graphs and, and, and whatnot. There are lots of different options. Again, if we go back here and we go up here to chart design and go to the change chart type. And again, there are a ton of different options like a pie chart um, like this. It's it's you know, you can try to figure this out and use these. Um, but, you know, I wanted to show you the ones that you'll probably use the most, which are these columns and line charts. And they all kind of are similar in their own way. This bar chart is basically, you know, this column chart just on its side. And so they all have their different flavor. They all have their different way of visualizing the data. But in essence, they're using the data in a similar way to to visualize it and represent the data itself, especially things like these box and whisker plots or these waterfall charts. Uh, you know, these are things that usually require specific data to kind of use. Uh, and, and so I'm just using data that you'll probably see the most of um, like this, this sales data. So I hope that this has given you a pretty good, um, you know, quick understanding of how to use these, how to customize them, how to copy and paste them over to a different sheet to create some type of little uh, chart and visualization sheet that you can use to show your employers and, and visualize the data that you are working with. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, huge shout out to Udemy for sponsoring this Excel series. If you like this video, be sure to like.